I had meant for the enrichment for this week to simply be the pointers to the works of uh, Edgar Dijkstra and how some of our own research fits into that. But in the end, I couldn't help myself. So I'm going to walk you through it in a little bit more detail. Perhaps this will get you interested. So let's have a closer look at the dot product again. We're going to change it slightly. The dot product was to compute alpha equal to x transpose y. What we're doing instead here is we're updating the vector alpha with the result of x transpose y. And that's just going to allow us to explain things a little bit more simply. We're going to reason about the correctness of the algorithm. In order to, comp when we reason about the correctness of the algorithm, sometimes alpha will be the current variable that's being updated in the loop. Sometimes it'll refer to the original value of alpha before the algorithm ever started. So what we're going to do is we're going to denote the original value of alpha by alpha hat, alpha with a hat on it, so that we can distinguish it from the current value of alpha as the algorithm executes. Now here's the algorithm on the left in flame notation. And let's just execute it. So what we have here on the right is an example of two vectors of size four with which we're going to take the dot product. And we're going to demonstrate how alpha is being updated as the algorithm executes. And let's have a look. We start by partitioning, putting these thick lines at the top here. Then we repartition, exposing the top two elements. Then we multiply those top two elements together to update alpha. So now the contents of alpha are its original contents plus the result of this multiplication. Then we move forward. We expose the next elements. We add the result to alpha. We move forward and so forth. Let's back up a little. So now we're going to look and see what a typical content of alpha is as the loop executes. Okay, now let's focus on what the contents of alpha are at this point in the algorithm. If you think about it carefully and you understand that this is x top, this is x bottom, this is y top, this is y bottom, then you can come to the conclusion that alpha at this point contains the dot product of the top two parts of the vectors added to the original content of alpha. Now, as part of the algorithm, then, we repartition. We update. And we get to the bottom of the loop, where x top and y top are now redefined to include these extra elements. If you ask the question, what is the content of alpha here at the bottom of the loop? It is, again, alpha is equal to x top transpose y top plus alpha hat. Now notice that x top and y top now have an extra element, but alpha has also been updated with an extra computation. Okay, so what do we have now? We have that at this point in the algorithm, alpha is equal to x top y top plus alpha hat, and at the bottom. Now, when we initially partition our vectors x and y, notice that at this point in the algorithm, it is also the case that alpha is equal to x top transpose y top plus alpha hat. Why is that? x top and y top are empty. If you take the inner product of empty vectors, you get zero. Alpha here at the top holds its original contents alpha hat. All we're doing here is repartitioning the vectors. And therefore, alpha here still is equal to alpha 
alpha is still equal to alpha at this point. But that's okay because these vectors were empty and therefore x top transpose y top is equal to zero. Now, how does this relate to the principle of mathematical induction? The fact that alpha is equal to this right here is the base case. Now, nothing happens between here and here. So the first time into the iteration, we know that this here is true. If we can prove that the update that we do here in the loop body puts it again in a state where this is true at the bottom, always, then we know that it's true at the bottom of the loop. That's the inductive step. If this is true for, say, after k iterations, then it's true when this current iteration finishes, therefore it's true after k plus 1 iterations. That's the inductive step in the principle of mathematical induction. So what do we have? If we can prove that this is the content of alpha here, and we can prove that it's, if it's true at the top of the loop, it's again true at the bottom of the loop, then by mathematical induction, every time we go through the loop, we know that this is true. Therefore, it's true that alpha is equal to x top transpose y, y top plus alpha hat when we finish the loop. But notice that when we finish the loop, x top is all of x, and therefore y top is also all of y because it's marching through the vector y the same way. What we can therefore conclude is that because this is true when the loop finishes, we know that when the loop finishes, alpha contains x transpose y plus alpha hat, and this loop is correct. What I'm trying to give you a feeling for here is how one might go about proving a loop correct. But that's not what Dijkstra wanted. What Dijkstra wanted us to do was to derive the loop hand in hand with its proof of correctness. So let's have a look and see how we can do that next.